So, hello. Welcome again. It's that time of the week. Friday morning. Another video drop. Another fantastic video. This is a really, really exciting video. So, um, what I do is um, I use my microscope for all root canal treatments, of course. And I record all of my treatments. Everything's recorded. And only, obviously, the best treatments get chosen for uh, for, for show, showcasing on, on YouTube. And this um, case, particularly, I was very, very excited to upload because it looks really, really fantastic. And and the, the, the overall obturation result, results at the end, this, this nice apical splitting, is essentially what every root canal dentist is always trying to achieve so um with this uh, case it's got everything it's got it's got like a um, like a ledge and how to manage a ledge it's got this deep apical splitting it's the use of t mode um with my uh, with my endodontic handpiece and yeah it's just a fantastic fantastic little case so again as always it's best just to get on with talking about how we managed this lower premolar. So what I haven't um, uh, recorded is the pre-preparation for this tooth. So what I have done is I have completely removed the old filling and placed another composite filling in its place. And I've done this trick where I basically just fill the whole cavity space with the composite rather than creating like a little hole. And that creates like a nice mono block for me to work with. And I'm quite confident really to access this tooth. And I've just removed the composite filling here and I'm just using a little, tiny little probe just to have a little feel around and I obviously at the moment can't see any kind of orifice. What I have done though is I've just used a size 10k file and just sort of probed around and I felt a tiny little drop but in this case the, the size 10k file is just getting stuck maybe midway down uh, the root canal here. So the, the, the trick, the first trick to do is you just can use an ultrasonic, a high energy ultrasonic tip just to open up the cavity space because a lot of the time when you can't get to length with your hand file it's because again I'll say this ad nauseum, I say this all the time is that the hand file is usually getting gripped further up. So another way of managing when you're getting stuck down a root canal is just to make a small bend at the end of your hand file. And then when you introduce this ham file into the root canal space, the trick is to very, very gently move the ham file in very, very small 365 degree motions to try and get that little bend on the hand file hooking into the, uh, the, the opening in the canal space. And in, and in this case, you feel that nice little drop into the root canal. The, the, the problem in this case is that I, I, I moved ever so slightly or I progressed ever so slightly further but I couldn't quite progress as far as I'd like to. So the sort of third line in my attack of um, uh, uh, negotiating down uh, a root canal is first of all lots and lots of irrigation make sure we make sh you know the, the, the tooth is nicely irrigated lots and lots of lubrication and then I'm going to use these D finders again. If you're a fan of my channel, you know I love these D finders. It's the same, same technique. We're just going to make a very, very small bend at the end, and then we are going to introduce it. Nice little watch winding movements. And this is a really, really poor demonstration of how to use this because my hand is getting in the way. But I, with these D find, with this D finder, I just drop straight down into the uh, into the apex. And at this point, I'm just going to check if I am at the working length or not. And I am. And what I like to do is, is I like to push the, uh, the the hand file through the apex so we're over. And then I like to back the hand file back upwards and then take the working length. Sometimes when you take a working length and you find that it's got a zero reading on the apex locator, it isn't the true reading. You need to push it through and then bring it back. And as we can see, the working length with this tooth is 17.5 millimeters and that is significant okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to use a, uh, a glide path rotary file and we're going to use it in t mode because i know that we are struggling to get down this canal and the great thing about t mode 
is it's like an automatic watch winding motion and uh, if, if you're using uh, you know rotary files in a handpiece if you are just going to use a rotary motion all the way down you, and, and it gets stuck you're going to risk ledging the tooth and you're going to risk fracturing the file so in this case I couldn't quite get to length so I just got my definer back in there and I'm just going to do a bit more further apical uh, shaping with this definer just sort of a little nice in and out movements just to open up that um, uh, the, the the corona uh, the apical third so my uh, uh, my glide path file can reach down there and shape it out so again back in with the glide path file this is a, a high flex 1503 nice watch winding movements with the T mode and then it drops in as soon as it drops in you turn the button again and then it turns into a rotary action so you're through the, the ledge and then you're gonna shape that ledge out so in this case I decided that I was gonna go straight up to a size 25 high flex um, I was pretty confident that the, the the ledge or whatever was happening at the apex I didn't know it was an apical sliblet at this point and um, was carefully negotiated and I'm using this size 25 high flex minus 0.5 millimeters from the zero reading and the great thing about these high flex uh, files is they have shape memory so I can just make a little bend at the end and I'm going to use this uh, this this Timo this watch winding motion just so I can just skip past the uh, the the, the so-called ledge but it's actually an apical split and once we reach past press the button again and then you get a nice rotary action and that's just gonna shape it all nicely out so we know there's a canal that's shaped and then with the microscope I can see that the the the, the orifice is slightly off center and there's a possibility there's a second canal I can maybe see there's maybe some sort of anatomy there that that suggests there's a second canal in the first instance I'm gonna open up the uh, the access cavity and I am gonna have another little look with a D finder but bent not right at the end but a nice sort of um, obtuse bend and um, I couldn't quite find this extra canal so I'm now going to use some uh, diamond coated ultrasonic tips just to very very carefully remove some of the dentin because what I don't want to do is I don't want to use a fast hand piece um, too much in this case because I might cause a perforation in the buckle wall and again lots and lots of irrigation and we can see that there is a second orifice which is fantastic you know another um, thing in, den in endodontics we like to see is second orifices because we know that if we find the second orifice that is going to be uh, a, a portion of the root canal hasn't been missed and um, obviously that results in failure so once we've shaped uh, both uh, canals uh, we're down we're ready to do a comb fit radiograph and in this case I know that the uh, the two canals join uh, in the mid third so just out of ease I'm just going to use a uh, just, just one cone to length to do the comb fit radiograph um, what I do like to do you can see here it, it joins quite quite further far up especially you can see that with a microscope and what I do like to do is like to just snip off the end of the GP cone because I feel like it just doesn't get in the way then when you when you take your cone fit radiograph and you can see here with the cone fit radiograph it looks really really nice it's to length a little bit of bend on the GP that's something you need to think about when you're compacting it down and then once we know that we've shaped it nicely and the GP is going to length we're going to use our final irrigation protocol and that is using sodium hypochlorite mixed with HEDP so HEDP is a trigenate like a, a soft chelating agent and I've used that throughout the root canal I use that with all my root canals and then I am going to use my ultrasonic scaly just to give it a good old clean out and you can see here that the ultrasonic scaly just dislodges all the muck and all the dirt against the canal walls and then we're going to do a nice uh, clean out here with the uh, with the sodium hypochlorite and then what you want to do is once you've given it a good old clean out you're going to aspirate the canal with your um, with your uh, 
uh, syringe and then you're going to dry it with these uh, with these paper points. You know, there's a, a lot of talk at the moment about um, do you use, uh, what type of uh, paper points you use. Are you using sterile ones or are you just using ones out of a pack? So we're now ready to obturate the tooth and we're going to use this uh, fantastic bioceramic sealer bark called One Fill. And I use these uh, tips called Visco Tips, okay? The problem with these Visco Tips is they don't quite... Um, uh, attach quite nicely on the end and you can see here if you don't screw them on properly and um, it comes off and it wastes all the sealers so that's something to be mindful of um, and another thing with uh, using a bioceramic sealer is I, I, I like to fill the canal space with lots of bioceramic sealer but this can cause vapor lock so this is where the GP point kind of bobs up and down because it's getting stuck with the the, the fluid can't displace uh, one of the great things about when you have a, uh, a second canal or a, you know like a like a canal which which sort of joins onto another canal, vapor lock isn't so much an issue in this case because there's somewhere for the sealer to flow. But nevertheless, I like to just push the GP point really really nicely to length. And as I've done that, the 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 sealer itself is is flown into the second canal, and I don't need to use any more uh, any more sealer in that case. And then once it's all um, uh, uh, pushed to length, the GP point is then cut off with a heated plugger. I I had a um, a comment off somebody about not using a heated plugger with a bioceramic. I just want to be sort of clear on that. Is is it? I suppose in a way it's okay to use the heated plugger to. Um, to cut off the excess GP and also maybe use a bit of the heater plugger further um, in, into the canal to sort of um, tidy up the orifice. Um, what I mean by not using a heater plugger with a bioceramic is not to do that kind of um, sort of the uh, warm vertical technique where you're pushing the heater plugger really, really far down into the canal. So we take the post op and again, this is the best feeling in, 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 in root canal when you're doing a root canal treatment. We've got a nice little bit of anatomy there. We've got a little tiny bit of extrusion, but not too much. And again, this is, this is what you come to work for. And I just want to be uh, clear in this case. I have been very, very delicate when I've been compacting down the GP into the tooth. And this is where um, it, Previously, I used to just be really, really sort of gentle, but now I will actively push down nice and hard onto the GP points. And what that does is it ensures that the, the sealer gets all into all the nooks and crannies. And I feel like getting this deep apical split here is a direct result of me pushing quite firmly down onto uh, the, the GP here. And, you know, again, I'll say this once, say it a thousand times, super, super nice results. And then what I'm gonna do to fill this tooth is I am gonna clean the bioceramic nicely with some water and then just backfill it with some uh, bulb fill composite. And there you have it. Super, super, super nice results as always. Listen, if you love these videos, and you want to see more i love making these videos every friday there's a video drop please please like and subscribe and it pushes me to do more videos and if you have any questions or more importantly any criticisms please don't be shy get your get your questions in the comments section let's have a nice debate and i will see you next time okay bye bye